Hello, I am Mindy Penn. Today, my partner Katie Smith and I will be exploring ways in which you can leverage social media for social and emotional learning. You will use Canva to create images for your posts, create social media accounts if you don't have them already, and link them together in a simple to maintain workflow that can be used to improve the social and emotional growth of your students, particularly in distance, virtual, or hybrid learning environments. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to enable notifications for our channel by clicking our logo during the video. Also, leave us a comment or check out our related videos by clicking the pop-up cards in the upper right corner. Here's how to get started with social media for social and emotional learning. The information pertaining to social and emotional learning in this tutorial is from the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning at castle.org. For information on this topic, please refer to their website. Feel free to pause the video to read the SEL content of the slide. To conserve time, I will jump right to how these concepts apply through social media. Social media gives us an opportunity to model things like self-confidence and recognizing strengths through the posts that we choose to share. A carefully curated teacher social media feed can highlight how you share in healthy ways by posting accomplishments like passing your national boards or pride in an alumni's accomplishments. If your students choose to share their social media, in return, you may gain insights into their own self-awareness. Here you see posts from students in my Instagram feed. Although a person's social media might be carefully curated to tell a specific story, we can still gain insights into what our students want the world to perceive about them. These teacher posts illustrate self-management. I posted about meeting a goal I had set for myself in yoga, which demonstrates self-discipline, self-motivation, and goal setting. Many of the students' comments in the thread then express wanting to try yoga regularly too. A school can use their media feeds to highlight the accomplishments of students who are exhibiting self-management skills, as you see in this post about upcoming senior mastery presentations, which are projects that students work on year long. Giving attention to them publicly highlights the strong self-management skills that are of value to our students. Social media naturally lends itself to social awareness. You will find that students like this one are already expressing their perspectives. For example, this student has a passion for conservation and ecology. The other post is from a digital media teacher who uses her Instagram feed to share artwork she has created in response to social issues demonstrating her empathy, appreciation of diversity, and respect for others, all in a series of photographs. Social media at its simplest level can help our students improve their relationship skills, particularly those cultivated in the digital world. We can use social media to disseminate school or classroom information and build relationships with them. And these relationships can last well beyond their time in our classroom because they're already in the digital space. Social media is one of the best places our students can really practice responsible decision-making skills. You will see here a post from a student who is exhibiting reflection and a school post highlighting a student's moment of ethical responsibility. Now we're gonna jump right in and get started with Canva and Instagram. We've included a couple of slides that give written instructions. Feel free to pause the video on these slides for those written instructions, but we're gonna walk you through in video form how to do Canva images. To begin with, you will need a Canva account. As you can see, Canva houses all of your previous designs as well, and these can be reused. To begin, click Create a Design and scroll until you find Instagram post. This will automatically make your post in the correct dimensions. First, I always choose a background. You can use one preloaded by Canva or upload your own images. I have chosen a chalkboard background. You might need to stretch it to fit. Add any bitmojis or other items you want to upload or find things in Canva's library. You will add your own text using the text tab and continue designing your post to your needs. Canva has thousands of free graphics and fonts. Have fun. Before finishing, I personally always like to use a border to make my post look extra fancy. To save and download your image, go to Download. I use PNGs, but Canva gives you plenty of other options. 
after downloading your image, email it to yourself so you can have it on your phone or iPad. Once your image is set, save it to your device and open Instagram. Press the plus button on Instagram to select your photo, add a filter if you'd like, caption your photo, add branded hashtag, and you are complete. Congratulations, you've created your first post for Instagram using Canva. Canva also offers mobile apps if you prefer to create your images on a mobile device and post directly from there. That way you can skip the emailing yourself the image part. Instagram has additional features you may want to explore, maximizing your use of hashtags, the use of stories and highlights. These are things that you can dig into once you have mastered the art of Instagram posting. There are many social media platforms out there but you need something that works fast and efficiently. So we're going to show you how to manage the big three with an efficient workflow, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We will describe a workflow that allows you to create one post and distribute it to all three locations simply by starting from Instagram, which will cross post to Facebook and Twitter automatically. You have to start at Instagram though, it only works in this direction. We'll also introduce an app called Buffer that performs similar tasks, but with more robust posting features and a tool called IFTT, If This Then That, which offers an even wider variety of options. When creating a social media presence for your school or classroom, it is important to create consistent branding. You'll want all of your handles and your profile pictures to look consistent across each platform. It may take a little trial and error to find a username that works on all three platforms, be sure your choice is easy to pronounce, remember, and spell. You will also want to use a hashtag or two in order to help people find your content. A hashtag is simply a keyword that you and others can use to tag your posts. You do not actually own or register hashtags. You just have to find something that isn't widely used by others. For example, my school's initials are AAST, but hashtag AAST is already used by the American Association of Sleep Technologists. So we use hashtag Koi Pride instead, since the Koi Fish is our mascot. Now we will look at posting to multiple social media accounts from a mobile device. You might post to multiple Instagram accounts by adding under settings, another account. You can create or add an existing account to your mobile app and create a post. At the end of the post creation process, you will simply toggle on or off the accounts that are to receive the post, whether that be multiple Instagram accounts or Facebook and Twitter accounts. Now let's look at linking those other accounts to your Instagram. Back to settings, choose account, linked accounts. You'll see here that my school, Facebook, and Twitter are connected to my Instagram account. Now I create my post. And again, I can toggle on and off which accounts will receive the post. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter we'll all get this post at once. There are other tools you could use if you want to go a little bit deeper. Buffer is an app that lets you connect your social media and post from there. The advantage here is more choice as to which accounts receive the post and posts can be easily scheduled for future dates and times. Buffer is also a way to put some separation between your personal and professional accounts. If you only connect your professional accounts to it, you cannot accidentally cross post to and from personal accounts. And a tool from our more advanced users, if this, then that. This software lets you write automated routines for social media and many other platforms. You can use this to schedule and repost content from other sources like reposting whatever NASA tweets today or a quote of the day or even archiving posts and tweets to your Google Drive. You might check this one out for some really high level automated stuff. We hope 
that these tools will help you use social media to improve the social and emotional learning of your students. Feel free to follow us on our social media and ask questions if you need more information. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, or reply to one of our other videos or share the playlist below. Subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Don't forget to check out our other resources and see what else is going on in Horry County Schools. Be sure to follow at Dear Disses on social media or contact us via email or our blog.